Thank you. The power to start is what allows us to move forward. Before we can move forward, someone has to begin. The question is, where does that power come from and why is it important? Many of you would like to start a project. Is there anyone that would like to start something that you haven't started yet? I hope that after this presentation you'll be inspired to go ahead and start. Sometimes we're intimidated because the help doesn't seem to be there. We may not know how we're going to do that. Often it's the power to start that allows that help to begin coming. Much of what we accomplish in this life is related to what we believe about ourselves, about others, about life in general. There was a great uh, industrialist in American history that was quoted by the Reader's Digest in 1947. And he said, whether you believe you can accomplish something or not, you're right. There's another man, his name was Jesus Christ, and he was famously quoted by telling a father that was concerned about his son. He said, all things are possible to him that believes. So all things are possible. Now, she mentioned $1.2 million. That was per year. But that's an old number. But we'll get to that in, in just a few minutes. Today I'd like to provide you some reasons why you can do a thing and why you should believe it. Many of these things we're going to see require the power to start all throughout. We've already heard from Dr. Gregg today about the changes that have happened here at this university. I was a student at one time and when it was called UMR, does anybody remember those days? Oh no. Well, I've dated myself. But uh, at UMR, I was a, had an ROTC scholarship. And at that time, we met in an old World War II barracks type building on campus. I haven't seen it lately. I think it's gone. There's been a lot of construction since then, and there's still construction. There's construction physically. There's construction in degree programs. Change is constant, and it always requires the power to start. Someone has to say, you know, we need a new degree program. And they have to have the courage to begin to write that curriculum. No matter what we do in life that's worthwhile, it requires somebody having the power to start. Today, the greatest amount of charitable giving the highest amount of subgroup, 32%, is to religious organizations. There are also service organizations, humanitarian organizations, and even hospitals and healthcare organizations that were started by religious organizations or are somehow affiliated. When we account for all those different types of entities, we find that well over half of them are religiously affiliated, of those 91% are connected to Christianity. Why is that? Why are so many different community service and different type of service organizations related to Christianity? Well, we have to look at the founder. And that happens to be a man named Jesus Christ. And he told his disciples, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now we have to wonder, well, what does that have to do with the power to start? What was in that power? Why are there so many Christian-related organizations serving the public? When we look at that word power and what it means, we have to go back to an old book, Thayer's Greek-English Lexicon. First published in 1889, and it's been published many times since then. But there are seven characteristics to that word power that Jesus spoke about. We'll just talk about three of them today. 
One of them is the power that belongs to riches and wealth. One of them is the power that arises from great numbers. And one of them is the power that rests in or consists in armies, forces, or hosts. The thing we have to remember is you don't have to have the riches and wealth, the great numbers, or the army. Does anybody have their own private army? You're still in luck. All we have to have is the power of it. And that's all we had. When we began the food pantry, I had never even set foot in one in my life. We certainly had never started one. We didn't have great rich, riches and wealth. We had $300. Now, in a room this size, I would say that we could probably almost come up with $300. That's all we had. We had a handful of people. We didn't have great numbers. We had a handful of people that were willing to commit to a year. And we didn't have an army, but we had the power of all those things. As soon as we signed a one-year lease for a building downtown for $300 a month, all of a sudden, organizations, individuals, and even government agencies reached out to us when they found out what we were doing. They said, hey, we want to help. One leader of an organization said, we were kind of trying to do that, but we didn't want to, and we don't even know why we ever started it. But we have a lot of things that can be helpful for someone that wants to do what you're doing. And we'd like to just let you have that to help you get started. So we went from nowhere to $300 later. It reminds you of the story of the boy with the sack lunch that Jesus used, and he multiplied it and fed the 5,000. Somebody had to be that little boy to just start and offer what they had. We had $300. It was turned into 300 people we served that first month. Within one year, we'd outgrown that facility. We had to find somewhere else. We found a place that was four times the size for the same amount of rent. We settled in. At that point, we were serving five to 600 people monthly. We got into a nice routine. Everything was going great. And then a, a building in a business that was nearby caught fire, burned half the city block, took our pantry with it. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Thankfully, we had already distributed food for that month. But unfortunately, all of our stuff was now gone. And we were scheduled to give out again in 20 days. We had no real estate, no assets, but we had the power of it. In 12 days, with, with 12 days to spare, rather, we got a call from a businessman in another town. He said, I've got a facility that's over twice the size of where you were with ample parking in a prime location in Salem, Missouri. And I'd like to allow you all to use that for a rent of zero dollars. We had the power of it. We got moved in, we got everything moved in and opened on time, began serving the public. We were there for a number of years. The facility was for sale. He told us that going in. Eventually it did sell and we had to move two more times. That brings us to where we are today. We're in a 12,000 square foot facility. It has an acre of paved parking and we have a clear title to the building. I may not have mentioned, in 20 years, we have never scheduled or, or uh, hosted a fundraising event. We have never borrowed any money. We didn't know what we were doing. Still don't. But what happened is, during the pandemic, uh, our numbers increased. We were up to, uh, let, me, let me back up to the great financial crisis, 2008. We got up to 18 to 1,900 people a month we were taking care of. We thought that would be the end. We thought that would be the high point. For the next two or three years, it continued to climb. We got up to around 2,300 people a month we were serving. We thought, surely this will be the high point. And it was for a while. It began to come back down until 2020. How many of you were alive in 2020? I think most everybody. 
Yeah, wasn't that something? That was, that was a piece of work, I'll tell you. Well, they shut everything down. We had to start again. We could not allow people in the building. We couldn't be near each other. We couldn't be near the public. And they lost their jobs. Suddenly, people that had never been to a food pantry suddenly needed some help. We needed an army. We had to load all the food, get it to the cars. We couldn't touch the people. They could. We had to keep our distance. We needed an army and didn't have one. Thankfully, we had the power of it. We got another call from the Missouri National Guard. They said, hey, we'd like to come help you do a drive through food pantry. We felt like they were an answer to prayer. They showed up. We had all kinds of help. We had six, over 6,900 people in one month in the summer of 2020. We gave away more food in two months' time than we had in an entire year previously. We gave away over a million dollars just in that month's time, June and July. 2020 turned out to be over 3 million in distributed food. We had an increase in donations. We had an increase in staffing. We had an increase to meet the needs. It even went beyond what we were able to, everybody that came we were able to give food to, and we had enough left over to share with other organizations in other towns. The power that belongs to riches and wealth, the power that arises from great numbers, the power that rests upon armies and hosts. We didn't have any of those things, but we had the power of it. And oftentimes when you want to start a program, you want to see something happen, sometimes it's tempting to wait until everything falls into place. But often what's required is someone to have the power to start. And just start and watch all the help that will come and help you with people with like mind that want to be a part of what you're doing. Thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. <laughs>